they unpacked their treasures. Now, what was in the treasure? The first bite, the first said that they presented to him gold. Now, gold is the metal of choice given to a king. So what the scripture is teaching is that until you make him king over your life, he's still the baby in the manger. It doesn't change who he is, it just changes where he sits in your life. So the Bible said they gave him gold, and gold is the metal of choice for a king because it means it's what's put on their crown. The second metal, the second gift uh, that's, that, that, that is not metallic, the Bible said they gave him gold frankincense was the second one. Now, pause for a moment, because if you're going to come to a king, if you're going to come to a, a ruler, if you're going to come to a god, you wouldn't bring frankincense unless you knew how to worship. What do you mean, preacher? Go read the Old Testament. The Bible says when they built the temple, when they built the temple, yes. they worshipped in the temple like you burn of frankincense. So frankincense was part of the worship experience. It releases a scent unto God. Now, can I pause? Take it up one more step. Now, this is not just for young believers. This is for those who are deep in God. The question becomes, you have been releasing a scent since you got in church. But the question is, is what is the scent been like? Oh, hallelujah. Is it the scent of a worshiper or is it the scent of a spectator? Is it the scent of a worshiper or is it the scent of a warrior? Oh, God, help me, Holy Ghost. So some folks during this season worry more than they worship, but what God is looking for in this season is the frankincense of worship. He's looking for somebody who says, I ain't got no money in my pocket, but I'm a worshiper. All my bills ain't paid, but I'm a worshiper. Because there were just three whites, there were three gifts. <laughs> and I believe there were three categories of the gifts. Right, gold. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the persons who presented gold was somebody who was looking for a king. Uh huh. Come on, bitch. And you don't Come on, bitch. Should look for a king unless you realize your life is out of control oh, and needs to be brought into the order of the kingdom. Right now. So I believe that the wise men mm. and their families mm. that brought gold and made a decision to give gold ah. was looking for a savior. Thank you, Jesus. Second, second. I believe those who brought frankincense were looking for someone they could worship. That's right. So right among the wise men was a sinner mm. and a worshiper. Mm. Both were seeking him, yeah. but from two different vantage points. Yeah. Uh, can I go one step further? Yes. There was a third present unwrapped that does not fit at first glance. It's myrrh. Uh -huh. It's myrrh. And maybe if Jesus had Armor bearers. <laughs> like the armor bearers would have said, Stop that gift! Because mm. myrrh is a bitter gift. Yes. Oh. Mm, Lord, have mercy. Can I preach for two more yes. minutes? Yes. Myrrh doesn't fit into the equation. It's a bitter gift. Ella, it's a bitter gift. It's a bitter gift. Deacon, it's a bitter gift. And there's somebody in here today that you're worshiping. From a place of bitterness. Oh, yes, you've learned how to praise God through bitterness, but it doesn't change the condition of your soul right now. Your soul is your mind, your will, your emotion, and your intellect. You're in a bitter place. You've been living in a bitter place, but you've got good sense to worship Him. Now, watch this. Murder! It's not only 
a bitter gift. The Bible says when Jesus hung on the cross, they gave him wine mixed with myrrh. <sighs> oh yes. In other words, it was a bit of sweet. Oh, mercy. Can I preach to somebody? There's somebody right now celebrating this Christmas and it's a bitter sweet. On one hand, there's areas of your life that you can rejoice. But in other areas, you're quiet. It's bitter. Amen. Can I go one step further? Not close. 